Welcome to the Business of Cleaning. My name is Haley Morris, and I'm your podcast coordinator and host. Our show is about bringing together the advice of experts from all the way across the cleaning industry. And for season two in particular, we're going to delve into how to utilize important connections to both elevate your business and your career. If that's of interest to you, just keep listening. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Business of Cleaning. My name is Haley. I'm sure you're probably familiar with me if you listen to some other episodes. And with me today, I have our co-host, Sam. Sam Reeksecker is the marketing manager for Janitorial Manager, and he is also one of our final editors for a lot of the content that we send out on our marketing side. And of course, one of the supporting elements and people behind this entire show. So Sam, I'm gonna go ahead and let you introduce the topic that we're going to address today. Yeah, so the you know, Haley and I were talking back and forth about what we wanted to really address uh, as we come to the closing of season two. And we're seeing some more and more stuff come up within Facebook groups and within um, other marketing channels, emails, et cetera, uh, that we really want to touch on marketing strategy and how to like, you know, really spend time and invest money into the marketing, I guess, funnel, you could say, um, and how to get started with it. So that's going to kind of be the topic of uh, today's podcast. Um, and obviously, with that all being said, we're going to have it all documented and stuff in a blog post for um, y'all to look at if you know you want to reference something down the down the road here. So um, yeah, that's gonna be our topic today. Thanks, Sam. I have to say, like working on the show, and officially this is our last episode of season two, by the way. So get ready for a really great mini season on an introduction to our season three, and I'll leave that to come. But as far as right now. I have to say, from my perspective, from Sam's perspective, what he means by seeing the marketing thing is we have seen an interest um, from businesses in how to grow and how to reach that next level. And what we're seeing too, from our side, working really closely with the cleaning industry is that there's not enough talk about marketing strategy, how to establish and budget accordingly, how to do things like that. And so we're going to do a really great introduction into how to start establishing your marketing strategy, why you need to do it, and just really the the basics of what makes a really well-rounded, affordable marketing strategy, because none of us are really going to put crazy budgets in there. Um, I know being on the marketing side, our side, it's never, you're never getting like all this crazy budget and all this crazy stuff, you tend to want to work on a smaller budget. You tend to want to work quick and you want to be very smart about what you're posting because you don't have, you know, hours and hours and hours every day to spend trying to create and target content, reaching into your demographic and understanding them as deeply as you want to. So that's where we're going to start. And I think it's a really great opportunity for you to take your cleaning business and really show it off to your community and take it up a level. And yeah. So, so the, the first kind of, uh, you know, one of our really big talking points we're going to talk about is we're going to factor in location. So a lot of, you know, a lot of you guys are in cities, um, you know, there's probably some small town people too. Um, but keep that in mind too. I know in previous episodes, we've talked about using, you know, the Facebook groups, um, I know people use Google ads, local targeted ads, um, you know, word of mouth, but remember your location is everything. So um, if you're in a great location, there's going to, going to continue to be opportunities. It's just how much time you invest in each channel to drive your inbound traffic. Um, and I think it's, it's really cool um, to focus in on, you know, perfecting one area, you know, really learning the language of that um, industry. And then once you nail it, let's move on to the next industry. So you're kind of, you're focused on this target demographic. You're doing what you need to do. You kind of nail your messaging. You um, are getting your inbound leads and inbound traffic 
uh, and opportunities and your closing opportunities. So once that funnel gets rolling, you can implement that over here for this industry and really focus on that industry too. So you kind of continually build that out in your location and um, you're going to find opportunities. They'll be right in front of you at that point. Yeah. The largest thing when it comes to location is who is your demographic? Who is your desired customer? And who is the customer most likely to find interest in your business? Because they're not always the same thing for one, but you want them to be. And so with this, think about who is your customer? Who is your potential customer? Where are they at? What are their interests? How do they communicate? And then the big communication is the big key because you're not going to breach that opportunity if you don't know how to communicate with your potential customer. So really think about, like Sam said, location, where are you at? For a lot of our cleaning companies, that means literally what is your physical region you're in? Um, if you're a different type of company, a supplier might be reaching significantly farther depending on how easily they're able to ship and move project products. So really you think about your customers, think about your market. A smaller town is going to communicate a lot more in person and through billboards and through physical materials because they value that in-person interaction more than in a city actually having a virtual presence is going to be a lot stronger because there's so much going in in the physical world that people tend to find their information online so think about that too as you start to really consider who your target demographic is and where you want to be as a a brand and i and i think that you know, flows well into the next, the, the next uh, bullet point that we have is building an online presence. 46% um, of small businesses do not have a website. Do you have a website? Are you managing your website? Uh, I am seeing in a couple of the different cleaning in, uh, industry Facebook groups that more people are asking questions about website. Um, if you don't have the skills um, to build a website, there's a bunch of um, educational stuff on YouTube, at least to get the framework in or talk to, you know, network. I know we've talked a lot about networking this season. Talk network with other, you know, business leaders in your area and they might know somebody who does website development. So it might be investing in online presence, um, which isn't just social media. It's, you know, Google reviews. It's getting your Google My Business set up. It's getting a website set up. It's getting online reviews, really pushing online reviews. I more, the more and more I visit places, the more they're really stressing online reviews, which as a marketer, it's cool to see because I can tell you right now, that's one of the first things I do when I'm looking for a restaurant or looking to um, give business to a business is I look at the reviews. I, I, Haley, I, you probably do the same. How often are you going to Google and searching where you're gonna go, whether it be as a tourist or just finding some place to eat, to sit down and eat, you know, are you going to Google to find online reviews? I know it's a little bit different for some companies, but I know I am, especially if I'm making a big decision. Well, I was going to say too, it's one of the first things you think logically when you're going to your friends and you're asking, who do they recommend? You're looking for that reputation. You're looking for the reliability and see what other people think. So when you go online to find somewhere, uh, whether you're residential or you're commercial cleaning or anything, when you go online to validate the choices that you want to make or to find a cleaning company, you're going to look and see what people think because ultimately they might have a pretty website, but are they doing a good job? And this is the best way to validate how well you're doing is by other people who are interacting with you actually being able to speak up for you. And so that's what online reviews do. And, and I think that plays hand in hand with the whole idea of the Google ad stuff that we had talked about previously was it all ties together. So you got your Google My Business, you got your website, you have inbound lead forms, you have opportunities with Google ads and Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads, and you have opportunity to invest in a bunch of different online mediums. But I think it's really important um, to focus on website, your Google Pro My Business profile, if you have the funds potentially run some AdWords campaigns, but you know that might be something that you consult with somebody else through your network in. Um, but really, you know, between social media profiles and a website, I think are really critical um, to start making headway in the marketing space, especially now. And I know there's some people who don't want to invest in a website because it's too much work. 
<laughs> to me, and this is me personally, because I've been in marketing for, you know, 10 years or whatever. Um, if a business doesn't have a website, I don't think it's real. I have, you know, and that is just my opinion is if you don't have a business or if you don't have a website, to me, you're not technically a valid business. It's worth that investment and that validity to really set yourself apart from potentially other people in your area, which I don't, you know, that's going to all differ based on um, your area. Like New York City is going to have a different group of people than we are in Toledo, but not having a website really is, I don't know, I think it's critical for most businesses to invest the money in building a website because it, it, it can separate you from other people. Well, and I have to say, I've watched small business owners in whatever industry they might be in start off and say, I don't need a website. We're only doing social media presence and we're only doing like foot traffic and word of mouth. And that's a really great idea. And actually that's how many small businesses get their start, but they reach a point whether it's during a pandemic or it's just a next wave of growth that they want to hit where somebody will come along and say, we need a website. People are looking for our website. They want to know more. And to be honest, a lot of people don't ask you up front the questions they have. They go online and they Google you. And what they want to see when they Google you isn't just Google reviews and things like that. Yes, they want to see that, but they really want to click on your website first and then go do the rest. And if they can't find a website or if they find a website and it's just like this solid color page with what looks like coding text on it, and it's very flat and undynamic, it's like you said, like Sam said, they're not going to feel it's a valid company. They're going to feel like, oh, these people don't have money for a website and they don't have money for me. Like they can't invest in doing a good job with my, my company or whatever you're cleaning. So even a really simple scaled back website with a couple different pages that allows them to get to know what you do, what you've been involved in, what kind of services you offer, how to reach you in contact, making sure you're contactable too through your website is hugely important. Biggest pet peeve of mine if I go to a website and I'm like, I just want to give you a call. Where's your dang number? And there's no number. Um, it'll drive you crazy. And you have to think of it from your consumer stand up like point of view. What do they need to connect to your business? And a website is a huge part of that. Your online presence usually starts with your website. Even if they're coming from social media, they want to eventually get to your website if they want to know about you. Right. And I, and I think, you know, you hit on the, the next point that talks about the advantages of your services and laying them out. Um, a lot of that stuff lives on a website and it could be as simple as a one pager. Think of it as a PDF that you hand out when you go visit a place um, to potentially clean their facility. Think about it in that way. If you think about it, okay, what, do, what do my prospects want to see? Um, for one, but also the community, what would the community want to see? Uh, so I know last or a couple weeks ago, we talked, um, to uh, cleaning for a reason was a couple episodes ago. Um, and she, you know, established an, an opportunity to clean for a reason. So that, if I was involved with that, that would be on there. That would be um, front page. <laughs> right, right. It'd be front page because it's a good opportunity for not only you to network, but you to show off that you're investing in your community. So what are you doing to set yourself apart from others in um, the community and how, you're, how do your services set stuff apart or set you apart from uh, your competitors? And I think the um, advantages to your services is the next section, um, especially now, you know, the next normal, when, as we kind of open everything up, there's going to be a lot more uh, tasks in the list of stuff to do in locations, whether it be sanitizing stuff, wiping stuff down a little extra um, throughout everything. And I think it's good to lay those out so people understand and they know what is going on. Um, and I think business owners really wanna see that too because they wanna know that their facility is safe um, moving forward. I know um, this is specifically for JM stuff, but the QR codes are, are coming here. I'm, I ate at a restaurant last week and the menu was QR. So you scan the QR code, you're looking at your phone, um, you order off your phone. So it's, it's cool to see the evolution of all the technology stuff. Um, but that could be listed as an advantage of your service is you're not, you don't leave stuff and stuff isn't being touched in a physical 
facility and people can report rooms dirty. There's there's a lot of cool stuff that's coming out of the, the you could say post COVID world. Um, but I think it's important to really explain how thorough you are in your cleaning, what you're doing to set yourself apart. Um, you know, having pictures and videos to back your, pack your um, services up is important. But I think now more than ever, it's, you know, critical for continued growth uh, to really list out how you are different than Joe Schmo on the street. I would agree. I'd say too, if you're, maybe as a cleaning business, there might be a saturation of cleaning businesses in your area. And you might not be able to differentiate your service and your products that you use as much as you want. But if you get onto your website or the other places where you're explaining these, you could differentiate them by customer reviews, like video reviews and talking about the quality of what you provide um, and things like that, uh, your communication with your customers. So if you're putting your customers on the face of your website, for example, and they're talking about your services and what you provide, it's another way to kind of preach and elevate and differentiate yourself. It shows that community engagement. It shows things like that. Um, and just overall, these are all efforts, your online presence, starting all of this marketing stuff in general and really showcasing what you do. Hey, we are a business, but here is what we do as a business. That's important. It all leads into our next topic, which is that brand. And I think this is sometimes overlooked by some companies, but your brand is your face. You could actually have somebody who represents your company. Like I tend to have taken over our podcast news where you see my face probably more than you want to at this point, but your actual face is when you think of a brand, when you think of a company, you tend to associate certain colors, certain logos, shapes, and different things like that with it unconsciously. So you start to build that. And that's like our next topic is if you don't have a brand, then who are you as a business? Who are you communicating yourself to be? So this is my favorite part of the whole thing. I'm a huge brand person. Um, it takes a lot of time and effort and money. Uh, and not more so just investment, investment of time, investment of your mental resources. Um, building a brand doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's a long, it's more of that long-term play, but it plays into how you message your website, how you lay out your services. Um, uh, any marketing related has to follow that brand guide. Uh, and you know, that's styling, that's different imagery, that's logo. Logo is huge, especially as you're trying to market locally. People need to recognize that logo and say, hey, I've seen that. I've seen that on Facebook. I've seen that on um, TV. If you're advertising on TV, local stations, I've seen that, you know, those colors look really familiar. I'm not sure where they're, you know, who's using those colors, but I've seen them before. It happens to me all the time. And I see a lot of marketing messages, but, you know, building a brand for your business is absolutely critical and this isn't just on a local perspective too i know we've kind of talked a little more on the local stuff you know, we i've been on talking about facebook groups too but it's more nationwide you know if you're active in those facebook groups and i talked to, again i talked about this during our episode previously people recognize your face your name and they automatically put it with a company how cool is it to network um with another cleaning company who's facing the same issues you are, who's working to build their brand and they're across the country. And you know, you can reach out to them via call, via text, via email, via Facebook message, et cetera. They, you can give advice, advice back and forth on how to continue to build your brand. And I think that's critical um, as you, know, you continue to grow your business. And I think a lot of it is one of those growing pains where um, sometimes it just, it's hard because of the time and investment. And I know for commercial cleaners, sometimes you just don't have the time to sit in front of a computer. Um, you almost have to make time. You know, that might be an hour before bed when you're, when you put the kids down to sleep or, um, you know, I was going to say on your commute, but don't be on your phone while you're driving. Uh, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, the, you go into the office an hour early and you spend that time scrolling through, um, making different social media posts, scheduling them to go out. There's platforms that do that. Um, 
et cetera, et cetera. And I think, I think that don't overlook building the brand for your business and how much of an impact it has on everything you do as a company. And it doesn't have to be that complicated. I know Sam's talking about this time you can allocate and things like that, but if you're struggling to find the time that you want to, or you think you should be dedicating, remember you have a purpose within your own organization as a leader and your purpose is not going to be full-time marketing. So realizing you're outsourcing your marketing efforts, either another member on your team, if you're big enough to support a marketing person, or you're going to be outsourcing that to a different, whether it's a marketing agency or it's an independent person who does it, you can actually outsource. And then you can say, Hey, I want to talk about what my brand means to me. I want to talk about like the colors and the feelings I get from my brand. And literally it is an emotional it's, uh, I think, what is that? An eth- I can't remember all the different. It's an emotional appeal to people. Your brand is an emotional appeal. So actually, when you're thinking of establishing, you're thinking about what your company wants to portray and pick and choose colors and shapes and things like that around your logo and your branding that's going to uh, emote those emotions and connect with those consumers that you want to do. We see this a lot in clothing brands and other things like that, that do a lot of B2C work. And you see it a lot. They have large social media presences, but it's no less true for you. Your brand is so important because even the logo creates emotion. And I mean, okay. So for this, uh, red is a very bold color, right? Red is very strong and bold. And I can bet you, if I say, think of red and think of a brand, something's going to pop into your head. And I can think of one right off the top of my head that immediately pops in. Sam, can you? Yeah. Exactly. So whatever brand, and I can probably guess which one you pictured, they're doing a very, very good job. You don't have to do it on that scale. That brand is probably an international brand, if I'm right about the one you're thinking about. It's a very, very large brand. It's been around for ages, and its consumer market is huge. Yours is local. So you only have to have a presence in your local market. And it's a lot easier to identify what kind of colors and what kind of shapes and what kind of things emote with them and how they communicate. So where you need to establish your branding presence. So is it more on the... Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, piggybacking off of that, I think it's important to realize that colors can, you know, you can dictate colors based on your target demographic too. There is a bazillion different studies. I know you talked about red there, Haley. Um, red tends to be, red, red tends to, to grab males' attentions because I don't know what it is. Even me, I, red is not, I do not like red vehicles. I told myself back when I bought my car and I told my wife this too, I am never going to buy a red car. Rumor because, has it you get pulled over more if you have a red car. Yeah, well- that hasn't happened to me, knock on wood, but I ended up buying a dang red car. Like, I don't know why, but you know, it, it just tends to be a more male dominated color. Um, but think about that when do some digging on branding, um, about colors and shapes, uh, and kind of think about your target demographic, what industry you're looking to get into, um, to clean and, you know, also, so take that into consideration, but also, what makes what makes you tick? Um, my favorite color is green. A lot of personal people, Haley, you know this. Green <laughs> is my absolute favorite color, and everything I do is basically green. So to me, building a logo that's green. If I were to send a logo to Haley and it be like a bright, like lime green, she would know that it came from me because that is my favorite color. So there's a lot that goes into that, but it needs to be something you're passionate about too. You don't want to just throw down colors because like I said, if your target demographics, a a male and you're just want to make your logo red because it wants to be red. No. How does it relate to your business and yourself as a, as a business owner, you want to be passionate about your business. You want people to recognize it. You want to be proud to wear it on your chest. You want to be proud to put social media branded content out. You want to be proud to put email campaigns out. You want to be proud to do all that stuff, website development. And I think it's it's critical for you to know um, that it's kind of that you have to include both of them in order for you to really see success and be passionate about it. Yeah, put some thought because I have to say that I've seen people rebrand. People completely change their logos, the way they look and stuff like that. I can tell you your consumer or whoever your target client is, 
is not going to see you as the same brand. They will see you as a completely different company if you have to change your logo. So it has to be something that you are sold on, something that you can commit to. And you're going to realize however goofy that name is that you picked or however simple it is, that is an identity that you're creating. And then the flip side of your brand is not just the physical or visual representation of your company. It's also what's does your name connote? When you go out into the public and somebody says your name and now they know your name, what feelings does that embody? Are you the organization that gives back and connects to its consumers or are you one of frustration? Is your customer service up to the standards you want? So another part of brand goes beyond marketing. It's what you're doing as a company. Does everybody in your company represent your vision, your purpose, and your why? If they don't, you really need to make sure that, again, you've established that not just on your marketing side, but across the board, and that the people you bring on and you work with are in that alignment with it. That's a huge part of your brand. It's not just the physical marketing world that you're creating for your customers. It's also just literally your reputation. Right. And um, the next thing on our list kind of really ties into that is the building your reputation locally is starting a blog. And this is really intimidating for a lot of people. I can tell you that because it would be for me. Um, I'm not a super great long writer. Um, you know, Haley knows this based on the emails I send her back and forth. I sometimes <laughs> can be short. Um, that's because I'm a busy, like we're all busy. Uh, you can outsource some blog content. Um, but to me, you know, writing are, are, uh, are you spring clean, you know, why spring cleaning is important. Um, why sanitization is important. Um, just stuff like that, that you can share, uh, you know, via email, via newsletter, uh, social media, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it, but actually setting the, the, stopwatch for say a half hour writing down some content and posting it on your website could you know not only validate your business but also could lead to some lead growth um, and opportunities for you to scale your business because people are looking for hey who can help me um, clean certain areas of my facility uh, you know it's springtime I want to get everything open back up you know in the winter in the midwest here where we're at uh, spring is coming actually it's here already um woohoo uh but you know i want who who can i contact that can help me uh, open my facility back up um you know or maybe if you do some maintenance stuff too who can help me uh with some office fixes that i need done uh so spending that time in writing content um haley i know you're you love writing so uh i don't <laughs> know if you want to hit on a little more of that blog yeah. content style Think about it. Blogs are great because blogs are a really great opportunity to expand your searchability, like Sam mentioned, and validate your expertise. And then it's just a really great way to provide additional value to your consumers at little cost to you and no cost to them. And that's one thing that people are really looking for is before they commit to a company is finding somebody that's already provided value to them. So this is a really easy way to provide value upfront that lures them in the door. Um, you know, we do free quoting and other things like that to get people interested and to get the conversation going. This is another way to do that. And it works for you when you're not working, which is really cool. But also I think Sam can attest to this. You might write a blog, for example, if you write a blog on some of the products you use and you're focusing more on enzyme-based products because you know that the dwell time is significantly less and the surfaces are safer for contact, it's a lot safer for interaction. And this is a lot more organic way to clean surfaces versus some of the harsher chemicals. Okay, so you write a really great blog post or two about those. And they hit and they do okay, but maybe in six months, a year or a year and a half, all of a sudden the chemicals that people are cleaning with comes up again. And now your post is just blowing up all again. You never had to take it down. You didn't plan for that, but all of a sudden your marketing has hit another period of growth and it's an additional benefit that you didn't have to put more cost into. You didn't have to put more effort into it working for you when you're not working. So, and that's the blog posting is more of a long-term play anyway. Um, we have those, um, you know, different marketing channels, whether it be you know, social media, which is going to be our next thing, obviously. Um, but, you know, sending out newsletters, uh, sending out printed material, mailers, all that stuff is more instant 
that is stuff that you send out and it's like, okay, uh, you get instant gratification, quote unquote, instant gratification for that. Um, blog posting is more of a long-term play. You could see a blog post a, two years from now that just gets in the right search in Google and it starts driving inbound traffic, inbound traffic to your site, but also inbound leads. Um, um, you know, you could see double the leads off of one blog post. And I know, you know, us in-house personally, um, we've seen some blog posts that really drive the point home and drive inbound leads. But we also see other ones who, that kind of flop, but they might have, they might quote unquote flop right now. But like you said, a year from now, that search topic might get a ton more traffic or Google might put it in a different uh, bucket, you could say, um, for the SEO stuff. And, you know, it could launch to where the one is now just down the road. So think about think about blog posting as more of a long term play. It's more of the, the long term play, more like a branding perspective where people recognize your brand and people recognize who you are as a company. Um, so think about it in that perspective, but again, they're still critical. And uh, the more, the think about it, content is king. So the more you put out, the there's more potential for you, for somebody, some eyes to see it, which could be a sale, a long-term sale too. So mm -hmm. just think about it in that, that way. I think I'm going to hit on something you said really quick, because I think that's the really big thing is it, you have to think with your business it's not going to be instant gratification. And in fact, the most successful, most impactful things you do aren't going to work immediately. They take time to build up. And I know as people, naturally we want instant gratification, but one thing that you have to really consider branding, online presence, blogging, all of these other things that you're going to do as a business aren't going to immediately drive in leads. It does not make them less important. In fact, the most successful brands in the world that you can think of, whatever industry they might be in whatsoever, the first thing you think of is actually their brand and who they are. And the first thing that you think of is going to be the content that's created from their marketing. So marketing is literally who you're going to be and it's how long you're going to last. It's really like, yeah, you might be able to you know, survive at the mom and pa level and just get by, you're more likely to run into financial troubles when a hard time hits like it did the past year. You're going to be one of those business that's going to struggle and probably not have the support that you wish you did. And that's a great place to start. But really, as a business, you need to think long term. And that's where marketing comes into play. So really consider what you're doing. Just take, like we've expressed, an investment. It's not so much the financial side as it is the time and the effort that you're going to put into really establishing who you are, why you're there, and connecting to your consumer, your desired market. And that ties into our last point here today. And that's social media marketing. And social media could be the exact opposite of what Haley just said as far as the long-term play you could hit uh I know when we were preparing for the the podcast today we were talking a little bit about cleaning videos on TikTok and um how satisfying videos tend to really you know get a ton of ton of face value um they get a ton of eyes on them they get a ton of interaction um and again that that's that instant gratification in the world that we live in today versus the long-term play um but you know, as we talked about building the brand, um, getting involved locally, uh, website traffic, um, blog posts, social media isn't far behind it. And it's just another avenue to really get your name out there, um, get involved locally, uh, and really express yourself and express your company um, and what they stand for basically on social. So it's it, it's more of the instant gratification stuff, but there is a ton of opportunity, whether that be ads, videos. I know Haley is going to want to talk about video stuff because she's the one that brought it up on the, the whole TikTok stuff, which is fine. Uh, you know, that's it. Yeah, it, you can, there's a, again, it is what you put into it. And like I talked about earlier, um, this is social media is how I built the company that I built before um, coming and working here. Um, I went from being, uh, hardly enough income to pay anything to, uh, really validating the brand and becoming more of a thought leader at the time, um, in that industry. And I was doing a lot of online sales stuff, uh, 
but all 100%, I did not pay for any marketing at the time. It was all investment on my phone. I probably went through three phones. I went through a phone a year, I think, when I was just the batteries just would die. Mm -hmm. Um, But I went through a phone a year, probably for the three to four years I was working on my own company um, because I was taking the time and I was investing time in groups and different. I was networking with Instagram stuff. And that was right when Instagram first came out. So it's been a while, but um, just investing that time in my target audience and, you know, networking and messaging and speaking with other people in the industry. And it was, it's, it's a constant, um, it's a constant time investment, but if you use it wisely, you could really see your business grow. I have to say it is probably one of the worst things to hear, especially within this particular industry, when you guys are focused on so many other things, but social media is one of the ruling Kings right now. When we think of search engines, we think of Google but it's not just Google, it's Google, YouTube. I mean, even Pinterest is a huge search engine. Instagram is a huge search engine. One of the biggest kings of them all is Facebook. So as far as searchability and making sure that you have an established presence, social media is a ruling entity right now because they kind of want to see pictures. They want to see imagery. They want to see what you're doing. You can't put all of that on your website the way that sometimes we wish we could. Social media is how you connect to your desired market without having to do it constantly. It's your customer service tool when you're asleep. It is another additional way to connect. And the thing with social media too is you don't have to be everywhere. It's nice if you can go ahead and establish your domain and grab it and your handles and have it account on there, even if it's not super active, but maybe one or two platforms you should be active on. You should have posts going out recently. You um, frequently, you should have groups that you're engaged in. You should have connections that you can rely on. Um, You also want to get to a point where you can start to be mentioned on certain pages. And what's great is a lot of our listeners are probably coming from smaller companies. So with that being said, you're really looking at a local demographic. Your social media following isn't going to be several hundred thousand people, which means it's going to be smaller and that's going to be okay because you're looking at local people. You're looking at local things. But the best thing about that is you get to know who your followers are and where they might be. You get to go to those Facebook groups or those LinkedIn pages where they might already be and you get to start interacting with them there and pulling them in. And it's a lot more manageable than if you're suddenly viral, which is a possibility. Because as Sam mentioned, one of my favorite things online are those viral videos of cleaning cleaning things. So like whether uh, Sam probably loves this, I am fascinated with car detailing videos. Um, they're very satisfying rug cleaning videos for cleaning. I watched a whole video of somebody going into a medical facility and cleaning their floors. And it was my favorite thing I watched all day. <laughs> so you have a really cool opportunity in this industry that those videos easily pick up their own traction just because they're extremely satisfying to watch, to use those. um, For example, I highly recommend Instagram. I know people like Twitter and all these other platforms. I love Instagram. I'm a visual person. A lot of people today are visual people because that's a majority of what we absorb. Um, Instagram is great because now it's incorporated videos that are like TikToks, which none of us want to broach that TikTok landmine, even though that's where a good portion of the population is drifting. It allows you to incorporate short videos, the attention grab. They also share to your stories a lot easier. They're autoplay. They tend to have their own algorithms that are a little bit easier to figure out than Instagram post. And you have to think, you can measure the impressions you make on like Instagram and Facebook. You can see how many people are looking at your stuff. And the cool thing about social media is you might only get 150 views on that Instagram reel and nobody likes it or only one or two people like it. But if you think 150 people came and asked what you were doing today with your business, how impressive that would be. That's 150 people who at least glanced your content and had an opportunity to absorb either unconsciously or not your brand, which means the more that happens, the more you're in the back of their mind and that's where you want to be. Yeah, no, I, I, I think social media is critical. Like I said, uh, it helped me take my business from zero to, you know, a good chunk before I sold it. So um, I'm a big believer in social media. It's changed a lot, but I'm a big believer in Facebook for business. Um, uh, You know, Facebook groups, getting involved in there, getting 
um, acclimated in your industry, but also like Haley said, Instagram, um, there's opportunities there, especially from a branding perspective, you can really punch your brand home on platforms like Instagram. And that might be posting. I know Haley's a big proponent of posting a bunch of times a day, which I think is critical. And I know, again, yeah. that that's time consuming, right? You know, that's something you really have to make emphasis in doing. Um, TikTok's the same way, you know, how are, when you're cleaning floors, are you pulling out your phone to videotape the before and after? Are you spending the time to take pictures before and after? Um, make those images and get them out there because not only does that validate your, your company, it shows, like Haley said, the customer service tool, it shows other people what you can do um, and how you might be different than, like I said, Joe Schmo, the competitor. Um, and I, I think having not only a website presence, um, but a social media presence, I think kind of pair hand in hand in order for you to really, really, really grow and scale your business. And it really, I think of it more as a foundational. I think both of those are more of a foundational um, aspect that how, if you think about it as a house, your business as a house, I think website and branding is part of that foundation. But I think social media is like the next the next step above the foundation um, as you're continuing to build that house, build those tiers. Uh, you know, some would argue, oh, I think that's foundational. Well, it's a little bit easier than a website. Um, but I think your website, getting your domain, um, getting something established, getting a blog started, I think that that core should be the foundation of any business, whether that be cleaning um, or software or really anything. Um, you know, I, I think it's critical for that foundation to be built. And then social media is kind of that next tier and it might be the top of the foundation or the first floor. Like I'm, I'm there, they play hand in hand, but I think it's critical um, for any business to really see any growth is in their marketing in general is um, through those two. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, it's like your hardwood floors. Like people always see them and compliment them. They're the first thing you see when you walk into a house, but they're only like one surface aspect of it. And sometimes that's what your social media is. It's that, it's that nice glamorous top coat on top of your well, foundation and everything. Yeah. Else. And I, and I think, and then people don't really look what's underneath, mm -hmm. right? You know, you walk into a house, you compliment the hardwood floors, but what, what's the foundation underneath it look like? Um, and I think that's actually a really good analogy. I'm glad you brought that up because social media is kind of the glamour makes you look good as a company, but what's the foundation look like? How much time are you investing in your brand or your website or your blog? Um, have you laid that foundation strong enough to make your, your uh, hardwood floors be straight and not warped? You know what I mean? So like you, you, that's like a phenomenal analogy. I'm glad you brought that up, Haley. Um, yeah. And I, I can... I was Go gonna ahead. say, I can hear people saying, well, I don't need to be glamorous or pretty. I'm a cleaning business. Like I make other people's stuff glamorous and pretty, right? But it's come to a point where sometimes your services aren't enough to set you apart. Or sometimes your ability to drive personal connections is not enough to set you apart. Sometimes you have to go that little extra. Actually, I'd say all the time now, just with the way the world works, is you have to be present online because even older generations who said we're never getting on social media, we don't like this, are starting to hop on ridiculous platforms like TikTok. I'm on TikTok. Do you know I know what the heck I'm doing? No. In my mind, I'm still like, I was raised by my grandma and my great grandma. I have that mentality. I'm going to stick with that mentality for the rest of my life probably. Do I understand TikTok and Instagram completely? No. But are they pretty? And do I get to look at them and laugh at things? Yes. And that is like what is happening is for entertainment purposes, people are starting to drift to platforms they never thought they'd ever get on. And even if your future customer is not on those platforms, their friends are, or their family is, and you could reach them indirectly without ever knowing it. And maybe you can't track all that stuff as much as you wish, but the opportunity you could be missing out by not being in the room is very strong if you don't have social media. And, you know, I know you talked about referrals and stuff that's big for me. Like I will see brand and I, if it's the aesthetics are good, even if I'm not like lawn care, um, I'm not like, I like lawns, but I will follow lawn care people because their posts are satisfying. <laughs> Seeing striped yards, 
seeing all that stuff. And I'd be more apt if somebody asked me, Hey, uh, what, what lawnmower, uh, should I get? I would go to those pages as a reference yeah. and I would say, well, this person, and I would send them the link. So even if somebody isn't your, really your target, it's good to put out content because you just, honestly, you just never know. It could be like, um, like we talked about the blog post a year from now, you could really see some lift from a post because it was sent to somebody who has a big business, who was looking for an opportunity, who um, was looking for a new cleaner, who was looking or had their eyes looking for the next opportunity. I mean, there's, there's a ton of opportunities with social. So content's king again. I'm going to say that again because you really can't say that enough. Um, and it's critical for your business to continue to grow and scale is you got to spend the time on the platforms and put out content and put out good content. And sometimes it's just fluff. It doesn't have to be the one thing is, yes, you're going to have direct marketing. You're Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. And, mm -hmm. and I know, sorry to interrupt Haley, but I think that's critical too, is I know Facebook or I know link. Uh, wow. I know Instagram is very fluff and glamor and this, that, and the other, but don't overthink your content, post it, post more than what you think, you know, Oh, I don't want to annoy my, my followers. You're not going to, because they're, they're not, not going to see yeah. every post. Right. Yeah. They, so. um, Instagram and other platforms more and more is being discovered about their algorithm. So if you're on Instagram, for example, they are really learning to pride original content. So they don't like reshares off of TikTok anymore. They're starting to push those down. Uh, text posts that are copied over from other social medias, those are starting to get pushed down to the, and these, there's a lot of accounts that are like uh, funny things that are reshared and these pictures pulled that aren't original content, they're reshared content. Um, all these themed accounts, those are actually starting to be pushed down and people are like finding new and creative ways to send themselves back up the pipeline. But Again, what it boils down to is that Google is like the king of a search engine that just exists to be a search engine. It is what you typically think of. But as far as where people are actually actively searching, it's not just Google. It is Instagram, it's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's TikTok even, it's Pinterest. I mean, think about how many people are out there on Pinterest searching for things and stuff like that. Um, they're all search engines. And again, you want to be present and searchable wherever you can be, especially locally, because that is the first place people go when they need something is they look it up. Yep, perfect. That's, that's hit the nail on the head. I, you know, I, I think we could continue to be that topic because I think it is critical. I think being able to be searchable and being able to be found, um, having an easy to use business name on social too and getting your handles, I think is critical too. Um, because even if you don't post content every day or every week, if you have the handles, you, you know, you'll still pop, right, in search. So a lot of marketing is being there for opportunity when it arises. And, you know, the difference between having a marketing strategy and not having a marketing strategy is that are you in the rooms where conversation is going? Marketing is really great because you can be in a million different places at once and you don't even have to lift a finger. You just have to do the initial effort to get there and it will happen for you. Versus if you don't have a marketing strategy, it's almost like you never left your building. Or, or you're just throwing stuff at a wall and hoping it sticks. <laughs> um, you know, and I think implementing a strategy, sitting down with a notepad and paper and saying, okay, here are, here are the platforms I wanna focus on. I gotta get a website built. So really start taking that baby step forward in your business and say, okay, I have an established business. I like my branding. I like my logo. Um, great job, by the way. If you, if all that stuff you got nailed, okay. Now let's take the next step. Let's get a website framed. You know, what do you want your website to look? Go look at fifty million. There's a bazillion websites out there. Even if they're not in your niche, go to them. What sections do you like on the website? What sections would you take and say, okay, well, I like the way this is laid out. Write it down. <laughs> Bookmark it. That's <laughs> the kind of stuff that you need as to give to either a marketing agency who's going to build your website, or if you're going to build it in-house, um, you're going to need to know that, remember that information, get your website started, potentially get a blog started, get your social media going. Um, it all takes effort and time, and it's not going to happen overnight. You know, take those little baby steps forward in your business, and you're really going to kind of see you um, grow locally. But 
also establish yourself on a national scale too. So I, I go ahead. I was going to say, and if you're halfway there, you've got this stuff started, but you just can't seem to manage it or nail it down yourself, really do consider the fact that a lot of small businesses, probably the majority out there do outsource the majority of their marketing. And that is perfectly respectable thing to do. You are not in business to market. You are in business to do what you started to do. So there are companies that that's what they've started to do. They know that their grand talent is marketing. And it is perfectly all right to pair up with somebody whose vision and ability to, to create what you want exists right where you need it. So it doesn't have to be hard. It takes the time and an effort initially. It takes that relationship building if you're going to establish a, an outside, uh, you know, a brand with an outside person or company. But don't know. I mean, I think we said it before, don't overcomplicate it. Just like the social media just realize you need to be there, whatever means you need to get there, whether it's doing it internally in house or if it's outsourcing, like learn what makes get sense. Get it done. You. Yeah. Yes. Just do it or wait. Oh, that's a brand. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of brands, again, most of the brands that you probably buy from and know on an international level, they exist because of their marketing. So just remember, you might think you can't take on more work, but part of your recruitment effort, part of your branding, everything that exists in your business is easier if you have an established presence, both internally and externally. So I think that's, yeah, I think that wraps it up. I think, you know, you nailed it. Uh, so just remember, spend the time, develop a marketing strategy inside and out. And, uh, you know, you can even get your team's opinions on different strategies too on how you can get better as a company, but um, just invest the time in doing it, especially as we start a new year. I know we're about through the first quarter already, which is really hard to believe, uh, but just invest the time in it. And I, and I think, you know, if you invest that time now by the end of the first, or by the end of the year, you, you should really see some growth. And I would have to say, if you don't, if you really are just like, oh my gosh, okay, I know, I know, I know, but you, you can't seem to figure out how to make that first step. Just reach out to somebody, like even the Business of Clean You podcast. If you reach out to our team, we could even just say, hey, have you thought of this? And give you that initial jump start. Or reach out on a Facebook group that you're connected on. That's a great reason to get involved in a Facebook group, JM Community. Um, <laughs> but like, ask. You know, that is one thing that I think people are afraid to do. And one thing that, you know, an online presence will enable you to do more of is just ask the questions and get the ball rolling, be decisive and just go for it. So, all right, that's it for this week and for season two. It's crazy, but we're already wrapping up our second season. Next week, we're going to be hitting our mini season and I'm excited to announce our guest at that time. And I'll announce not just a mini season topic, but what we're launching into for season three, you're going to want to be there. So see you next season.